Aleluya. Good morning, Smyrna Baptist. Welcome. Glad you came to worship with us today on this Sunday before Christmas. Let's all stand and sing Angels from the Realms of Glory. Glad to see everyone that's come uh, our way to worship. Take just a few minutes out of our busy schedule to remember uh, Christ Jesus and his great love that he has for us and the fact that God sent him to die for us. And so we put our faith and our trust in the risen Lord and the risen Savior. And so let me just remind you of some announcements. Um, there are some events going on. We want to make sure you're aware of them. We will be having choir practice this afternoon at 5 o'clock. But the Wednesday night Bible studies and the prayer meeting and the children and youth activities are canceled for the Christmas and New Year's break. And all activities on Wednesday night will resume January the 6th, 2021. Don't know how 2020 was for you. But uh, if you didn't like it, if you didn't enjoy it, 2021 is right around the corner. Also, don't forget the Lottie Moon Christmas offering for international missions. And I want to ask this of you, if you would, please. Uh, those of you who have poinsettias, take them home today for your family to enjoy on Christmas Day there. And just a reminder here, there's still time to buy cookbooks for friends and relatives on your list. Any other announcements that we need to be aware of? Pastor Bobby, I know you said we were going to have choir, but we're actually not going to have choir tonight. We're going to oh. them spend some time with family before the service okay. tonight, so we aren't going to have choir. Tonight. Okay, all right. Uh, another announcement, no choir practice this evening. <laughs> this would be a good time, Brother Till, for you to share some, uh, some of the things you wanted to do.
Thank you guys so much for that. I appreciate it. Next, we are going to stand and sing I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. Let's continue to worship together with one child. My sister is visiting today from Nashville, so I asked her if she would join me on this song. And the words are going to be on the screen. Please join me on the choruses. This song is uh, so meaningful, and it, and it talks about how one small child changed the entire world forever. And it's, it's crazy to think how Jesus came as a baby, and that baby is the one who saved our sins. Um, born in a manger, a lowly manger. Um, it's crazy what Mary and Joseph went through, knowing that they were giving birth to the Son of God who would save our sins one day. And so that's what the song is about. Sing it with us. It grows and somehow becomes alive. It moves. She knows that her baby has arrived. She's so scared, but she's so blessed. She lays down her fear for the hope at her breast, for she knows one million chains could never hold back this moment in time and one thousand dreams could never dream what this moment truly means heaven and earth they cradle the infinite joy born on this night for it only takes one child to forever change the world he stands beside her Share her pain if he only knew how He whispers, I love you As he gently strokes her brow She's so scared, but 
but she's so blessed. He's a thundering pride pounding deep in his chest. For he knows one million chains could never hold back this moment time. One thousand dreams could never dream what this moment truly means. Heaven and earth, they cradle the infant in joy born on this night. For it only takes one child to forever change the world. Ooh. Oh. Christ is born. We are blessed. Every day is gonna bow and every time. Never hold back this moment in time And one thousand dreams Could never dream what this moment truly means Heaven and earth They cradle the infinite joy born on this night For it only takes one child this is the one child this baby cries and for the first time the world hears the voice of God weep Mary sings a lullaby as the hope of the nations gently falls asleep. We know this is that one child to forever change the world. We just bow our heads and we thank God. In this moment of silence, fathers, we come to you as our voices break the silence, remembering this child that would change the world, change us so much. It is only you and you alone, Father, that knows the height of our joy in the pit of our despair. It's only you, Father, that your birth has brought us here this morning to celebrate it. But we all come with different hurts. But yet your scriptures, they tell us that you are the one who comforts all of us. With all the events that's going on in our world today, as our leaders are getting ready to take their positions of leadership, may we recognize you as the one that always stands for truth and justice. May we be the ones, Lord, to be a part of that leadership team. 
in our daily business, in our daily lives. Because we really, Father, need comfort from you. And the scriptures even tell us that you're the God of all comforts. So as we, we praise you for our sin being forgiven because of Christ Jesus and our faith and our trust in him. It's a reminder here, Father, we like all sheep have gone astray and we just need you every day. Especially through those difficulties that come our way. And your Holy Spirit the intention of the power of the Spirit of God is to meet us at our greatest hurt and begin the healing process, knowing that your great love for us never ends. Be with those, Lord, in the hospitals, those, Lord, in the assisted care living areas and those recovering from the COVID virus, those suspected of having it. Lord, be with them. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your love and for your mercy. Traveling mercies on those, Lord, who will be making their ways back home, their way back home, visiting with loved ones and families, Lord. Pray for your grace to be with us. Pray for every individual who is already now preparing to maybe do their own story of Christmas when we get together as family members. Keep us in your grace. Continue forgiving us of our sins. And my prayer, Lord, today for those who have gathered will be you touch us in a special way. Maybe through the music. Maybe through a, a verse of scripture. Maybe through something that is said. Because we're here and we're here just to worship you. And Father, as we repeat the prayer that you taught the disciples to pray, it's so prevalent. It's so important for us even today. Lord, hear our prayer as we lift our voices up to you. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the fourth Sunday of the Advent, preparation of peace, and our scripture today comes from the second chapter of Luke where the shepherds are out in the field and the angels address them. It starts in verse 10, uh, 10 through 14 in the second chapter. It says, Do not be afraid. I'll bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. There will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom favor rest. Today we relight the candles of expectation and hope, recalling God's promise, the candle of preparation, remembering the voice crying in the wilderness, urging the people to Prepare the way of the coming Lord. And thirdly, the candle of proclamation reminding us of the joy we found in him, in Christ. Today we light the candle of revelation and peace. We celebrate the announcement of the coming king and the greatness of God's love revealed through the Christ child. Pray with me, please.
Father, we thank you for revealing yourself through Jesus. We praise you for the greatness of your love. Help us today, Father, to share your peace with others and live our lives more like Christ every day. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Um, I just wanted to get up here and speak this morning and say we're missing quite a few this morning due to earaches and strep. So we've got three beautiful little girls up here that are going to sing. And Miss Jeannie and I have really been blessed by these kids. Um, I, I've lived in Dooley County for 15 years, and I finally, over the last few years, come in here to Smyrna. I've made a lot of good friends, and um, I finally found my home church. So... I'm really proud of that, and these kids have been truly a blessing to me. I, every Sunday I come, and I look forward to this every Sunday to teach these kids about God and Jesus. So thank you for allowing us to do that. And we're planning on next Sunday to sing again. Hopefully everybody will be here. So, um, But we're going to do our best today, and these kids have been working so hard. And I'm, in, I'm really glad that y'all are able to see how hard these kids have worked and how much they've learned with Miss Jeannie and I teaching them. And they've taught us a lot, too. Jingle bells, jingle all the way. On a fine misty rock, on a soft and play. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. On a fine misty rock, on a soft and play. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells. Jingle all the way, all the fight against the right, and also fin slay. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way, all the fight against the right, and also fin slay. Hey.
birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, baby Jesus. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, baby Jesus. Happy birthday to you. morning. Into darkness comes a light. Into silence a baby's cry. The birth of freedom, the death of fear In a manger, Christ is here Let there be peace on earth Let there be peace on earth
my condolences to whoever owned that poinsettia over there. <laughs> but it was well worth it, what you say. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, I got to give you a life for something. <laughs> You've got your Bibles, if you'll turn to Matthew chapter 2. I want to read the first 12 verses of Matthew chapter 2. Talking about the gift that keeps on giving. Um, I really wanted to share a message with you this morning about the shepherds. The shepherds who became evangelical when they stopped by with the invitation they got from the angel of the Lord when they stopped by to see the Christ child who was born in the manger, who was in the manger there. And I really wanted to just uh, nail some points home uh, with you about the shepherds, but the message just kept getting bigger and bigger. I mean, it ranged from Zechariah chapter 11 to John chapter 10 where Jesus says that he is the good shepherd all the way to Psalm 23 where the word of God says the Lord is my shepherd and I knew that I needed about another year's uh, time to study about the shepherds because it's interesting there that they came. They did not come bearing gifts. They did not. Oh, you might say, well, maybe they didn't know how to celebrate Christmas. Well, this was the first one. Nobody knew how to. This is one of those events that will never happen again. Jesus Christ being born into the world. He is God's son. He became human. And to be honest with you, I probably know more about giving gifts than I do about shepherds anyhow right now. So I like the gift thing, don't you? Let me remind you in these verses here that we're going to see that Jesus is God's gift to man and he is wrapped in human flesh. Christmas Day is the time of giving and receiving gifts. No matter how bad things get, may not even be able to go home for Christmas, but we're going to give gifts out, right? We're going to find a card or we're going to find a present that's going to belong to us and to us alone. We know about giving gifts and receiving gifts and uh, gifts given to those that are truly in need always brings a blessing. And I want to tell you now, Jesus is the one that will meet us at our greatest need. And our greatest need is this. I'll just go ahead and share it with you so that you can share it with others. Our greatest need that we, is that we're all sinners and we need a Savior. And that's what Jesus came to do, to meet us at the need that we had the most, no matter what's going on in your, in your life. I'm convinced that's the need uh, for the world today. That is what will usher in a time of peace when we begin to make peace with Almighty God and when we begin to see ourselves as being lost and, and we need uh, we need saving, we need being born again according to what Jesus told Nicodemus. And, and so what I want you to do, and what, what I want to encourage you to do in the minutes that I have with you this morning, is, is, I, I want to make sure, I want to give you a, a warning. This sermon comes completely uh, uh, stocked with anything that you need, especially this warning here though. Whatever you do, please fight spiritual indifference as to what this season is all about. Whatever you do, do the best that you can to fight this spiritual that indifference that was so prevalent in the days when Jesus was born. The religious leaders knew uh, that he had been born because the wise men told them, they never bothered going that six-mile distance from 
Jerusalem to Bethlehem to see if it was true or not. Some suggest it was because of spiritual indifference. Whatever you do, do not dance that dance with spiritual indifference as to what God has done for those who don't know Him as their personal Savior, for sinners, for you and I. Please don't have a faithless, just a faithless idea there of apathy. Fight against that with all that you have. Really, I think that's the Christian war fight, uh, war that we have and, and, and that we wage is do not allow everything going on in our lives today allow there to be a spiritual indifference about you, about me. I pray for you and you pray for me. Let me read these verses for you. Matthew chapter 2. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. They knew exactly what to do. They knew exactly where to find this Christ child that was to be born. And they said unto him, verse 5, In Bethlehem in Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. And when they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. Notice now what they did is they worshipped him. And when they had opened their gifts, their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Just a couple of thoughts here to remind us and to get, and, and, and to get our attitude about Christmas where it should be. Gifts were given to the Christ child by the visiting wise men. As, as we see this, as we begin to think about this, I, I know the shepherds, they had the opportunity to see Jesus but we're going to, just for this Christmas, we're going to do with them like we did the poinsettia here. We're going to discard them for the time being. Just for a short time though, because I hope the Lord will give me a full year to preach about the shepherds before this time next year in 2021. Because it's, it's an important thing there. But right now, we're looking at those wise men who came not so much astrologers as they were astronomers, men who studied the star. One night during their studies, they saw something different in the heavens and set out in, in search for the king that was born. There was no spiritual indifference with these wise men here. I have no idea where they learned about Jesus, where they learned about the Messiah, the, the Jewish child that would be born, that would be called the Messiah. I have no idea where they learned about him, possibly from Daniel, maybe in the Babylonian captivity there. We do not know. All we know is that they saw the sign in the heavens there, the star, and they began their trek toward where the Christ child was born, the king of the Jews. They found him. And I'd like to say this thought here just 
in this simple statement here. Those who search for the Savior always find Him. Never has God said, oh, seek Him and it would be in vain. No. All those who search for the Savior, they find Him. Who do the diligent search there. As a matter of fact, Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13 says, And you shall seek Me and find me when you shall search for me with all of your heart there. But it can't just be a knowledge about who Jesus is. It has to be something that con takes control of your whole inner being. He's the first thing that you wake in, up in the morning and think about, about Jesus Christ. He's the last thing that you lay down at night and you think about who Jesus Christ is. And he has promised to reveal himself to an individual like that. After they had worshipped him, they presented him with gifts. The Bible says that it was gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Think about this. Never again will they have the opportunity to give to the Christ child. It's a one-time event is all it is. It's a one-time event. They won't be back next year. According to the scriptures, and that's what I use my, my guideline here, according to the scriptures, this was a one-time gift, a one-time offering. And I throw the question back at you. If this was the only time that you ever heard the gospel message preached, what would you do with it? I'm sure we'll hear it time and time again. But this is the one and only time for the wise men to give a gift to the Christ child. After they worshipped him. Now, now I'll be honest with you. What, I, what I've figured out as, as I was looking at the shepherds and things like that, there, there is this one sum of money that you and I need to stay away from. And it's called 30 pieces of silver. That's what Judas valued Jesus at. Well, maybe not Judas. It's, it's what the high priests and the religious leaders of Jesus' day prized him at. Judas said, what will you give me? And I'll turn him over to you. And they turned around and they gave Judas 30 pieces of silver. Now, you know what, that's, that's interesting. It, it really is. As, as a matter of fact, here's, here's what I'm sharing with you. When they worshipped him and they gave them the gifts, if they had held back anything, you know what those gifts would have represented? 30 pieces of silver. That's what it would have represented. Why do you say that, Brother Bobby? Well, just, just for an illustration, I'll be honest with you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, the Bible, and, and, and this is good for a preacher. Now, I don't, I don't know about you. You might say, Brother Bobby, I'm, I, I don't have no intents of being a preacher or anything else. But listen to what the Apostle Paul made this statement here when he's talking about love. Though I speak with the tongue of men and of angels and have not love, I am become a sounding brass and the tinkling symbol. Somebody in his mind decided he was going to be the greatest and the best orator, the greatest preacher this world has ever known. And if he decided he was going to do this, and, and all of a sudden, and he even became that, the greatest known evangelist, speaking with the tongue of men and of angels, if that one main ingredient is missing, you know what's going to happen there? At the end of that individual, of that pastor's life, it's going to be the equivalent of 30 pieces of silver because he didn't do it with love. You know, that's the, great, that's the reason that Christ Jesus came, which ties into the next thought here. The Magi, they come, and they bring gifts to, to the king, and they'll never have another opportunity to do that again. 
That's it. They get on their mode of transportation, whatever that was, and they head back to wherever they came from. The Bible is silent on that. And there's speculations and there's movies about, about the wise men there, but, but we do know this, they never again had the opportunity to give to the Christ child like they did at that moment. But it wasn't just the wise men that were giving gifts. This baby, the king of kings, was giving gifts also. Let me list them to you. The reason I encourage you, whatever you do, don't look at someone's practice of the Christian faith and think it's such an end. It, it, it doesn't matter just as long as you have faith. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is what our rock-solid foundation is about in the Christian community here, and I will sell it for no price of money whatsoever. God's gift to the world is Jesus Christ. How do you know that was done in love, Brother Bobby? Y'all remember what I preached on before last... Uh, this past Christmas, for almost the whole month of December, I spoke on John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting, everlasting life. You listen to that, you listen to it time and time again, but whatever you do, don't walk away indifferent from that kind of love. For God so loved the world. It's worth much more than what an individual could ever put a price tag on it. But ultimately, that's how Judas thought about it. But he'd rather have the 30 pieces of silver there. But time and time again, we see those, those same uh, words and that same amount of money. Sum it up. Sum it up. Every time somebody lives their life as though God did not exist, no matter how much they help other people and, and no matter how much they're, they're able to feed the poor and things like that and how much money they give to this individual, to that individual, ultimately at the end of the day, it's nothing more than 30 pieces of silver. Brother Bob, I don't believe that. It teaches us from the Scriptures. The reason for Jesus' is coming the motivation that moved Jesus from heaven's morning star to come to earth was nothing but love. You can laugh at that. You can reject it. Or you can accept it as I have by faith. But God's gift to the world is John 3.16, Jesus Christ. There's another gift that the Christ child was bringing. And it is God's gift that satisfies a thirsting soul. I'm not talking about a physical thirst. I'm talking about a thirsting soul. We hear that in John chapter 4, verse 10. It was a woman at the well. Five marriages behind her living with a man that, that was not her husband. And here's what Jesus said to her. Catch this now. If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink, because remember he had asked her for a drink, you would, you would have asked of him, and he would have given to thee living water. See what Christ child here is all about? He's all about love. Not in the secular sense. There's a world pictures love now, uh, a, a love hate relationship there. Th this is this is something so so God given that many people trample all over it, thinking that it's true love, but it's not. And then looking and going just a little bit deeper, Jesus tells the woman at the well that when you find him, you find that thirst for that that empty soul that was a part of you one time. It is filled to capacity now with the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
that causes all the other giving that we give to be something more than just a sum of 30 pieces of silver. And also through Jesus Christ came the gift of grace. Now this is amazing that this stuff is found in the scriptures here. You have to look for it. Or do like I do, find somebody, find somebody else that's looked for it and just, hey, I like this. If he, it's no use in rewriting sermon that, that, that's, hey, this is awesome here. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Was God give, giving? For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. See, the only way the Christ child can do something like this is that ultimately he's God's son. And he gives to us in a moment of grace eternal life. Because of Christ we have this gift of eternal life. Let me read it again for you in Romans chapter 6 verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Well, the Bible, that's just old stuff. Yeah, I know, but it's, uh, it's still true. Yes, don't throw something away just because it's old. Hang on to it. Hang on to it. Especially if it's coming from the Word of God. For it really is, it's a, it's a sad debt that we all have to pay. You know what? Brother Bobby will pay it too for the wages of sin is death. Brother Bobby will pay that, that sin debt also. He will. But it's that second death that Jesus Christ saves us from. Not that first death. Lest he comes. Lest he comes with the rapture of the church. We all will face death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. All this from the Christ child? Yeah, because he's not going to stay the Christ child. He's not. As a matter of fact, one of these days he's going to be presented. He presented himself to the Jewish nation in John chapter 10. He says, I'm the good shepherd. Any shepherd that's come before me was false. If they didn't come through the front door, if they didn't reveal themselves for who they were, they were nothing more than shepherds who fleeced the sheep. And all of Israel understood that Jesus was saying He was the one. He was the door to the sheepfold. And anybody who would tell them anything else was to the contrary. They would be a false shepherd. You see, there's a... Also, with all these gifts that Christ is bestowing upon us, there's a responsibility that comes with God's gifts. And I think this is really the main thing that keeps people from really believing because they realize the responsibility there. Hey, whether you believe it or not, whether you reject it or, or accept it, the responsibility still lies with you and me as an individual. But here's what 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10 says about this responsibility that comes with God's gift. As every man, 1 Peter 4, 10, hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another without grudging, without murmuring, is what it's saying. See, when I get through this message this morning, whether you like it or not, check it, cross it off, whatever, whether you like it or not, do you know it's going to be off of my hands? Oh man, I did the best that I could to remind the people of the gifts that the Christ child is, is giving. And, and, and he's, he's been doing that even before the creation of, of, of the world there. Uh, Jesus Christ uh, the Son of God was with God even in the creation of the world there. But yet he has lowered himself to become a man so that he could be our atoning sacrifice for our sins. 
And we are given the privilege of ministering this great news to others. See, of all the gifts that I've received, Jesus Christ is my most prized possession. What's he worth to you, Brother Bobby? Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm still summing it up. I mean, I really am. At the end of the day, what's he worth to you? Is he worth a second glance or another thought? Or you just pass it off? See, at the end of the day, I'm going to lay my head at rest tonight. I'm going to go home and I'm going to rest believing I did exactly what the Lord wanted me to do to share with you the gifts and just leave it up to you whether you want to receive them or not. It's, it's, it's sort of like, like this. My mama taught me to tithe at an early age um, when I was making $2 an hour. Most of y'all know that story there. For 40 hours, that'd be what? $80? Every week, I'd get a paycheck. I started to work early when I was 13 years old. I think that's what kept me in school. I could get away from work when I went to school. But I realized that it was mama's tradition, it was mama's thought that you're supposed to tithe. And, and the Bible speaks of tithing and things like that. I mean, it, it really does. But what if I were still today doing what mama told me to do and still giving $8 a week for the Lord Jesus Christ? Y'all hear me? Y'all, y- you understand the thought there? How much is a Savior worth? Well, I do know this. He doesn't just want your money. He wants your time, your talents, and your thoughts, and everything else. Oh, y'all knew that, didn't you? You knew that. I do know this. It's not all about money. It's, it's really not. But I tell you, if you choose money, at the end of a long life that God's blessed you with, on what we call Judgment Day, it's going to be a quick. If you don't choose Jesus in this life, you're not going to have another opportunity to choose Jesus and let him know how much you think he's worth. Because I'm still summing it up. I, I, I really am. And, and I, have no, I have no idea. Uh, uh, the worth of Jesus except that he's worth everything that I could ever give him. And ultimately, when you go thinking about a tithe, you think about what you're left over with to spend on your own. But I've got to the point now, really, what Jesus wants is a gift, is an offering, is a gift, is an offering. You tell me what he's worth and then you live accordingly and then you give accordingly. Because the bottom line is, I, I know. You give a tip to somebody. But whatever you do, don't you try to tip Jesus with a thought every once in a while. You go to helping people out. And you, you think that you're going to win some kind of grace because you're, you're, you're really generous in your giving. Whatever you do, at the end of the day, It'll be nothing more than 30 pieces of silver. Remember what happened to it? Judas come back to the temple there. He threw it to the religious leaders. That didn't sound like a nice thing, did it? I mean, you know, he threw it at them. He said, I have betrayed innocent blood. You know what the religious leaders had to say? And I'm telling you, this is nothing more than Spiritual indifference, what's that to us? We don't care. What's that to us? And when he threw it down, you know what they did? The religious leaders said, that's blood money. That's what we gave Judas to, for them to give us. Jesus, that's blood money. They went out and bought a pauper spill for, for people to be buried. You see, the point I'm trying to make is this. Of all the gifts that I've received, Jesus Christ is my most prized possession. 
And I try to find ways to give him to other people. Matter of fact, I don't know about you. I don't know exactly how to witness. I'm not an evangelist or anything like that. But I will pay people just to sit down and let me talk to them about Jesus. <laughs> you got to let that say. What did he just say? He's paying people for them to sit down and listen to him? Yeah, well, how do you do it? How do you witness? Here's my plan here. I'll just share it with you. I know I'm on borrowed time here, but uh, I, I've got this, uh, this neat package here. It's in a, a, a plastic cover because 20 years from now, it's going to be just as important. And on one side of it is six miles from Jesus. It's just a gospel track. This is a story that tells uh, about the indifference of the, uh, of, the, of the Jewish people in the days when Jesus Christ was born and the religious leaders did not bother to go see who it was that was born. They were totally indifferent. And I think it's important. And the other one is ten reasons Jesus came to die. And I've told you number nine and number ten. But then I tell them, I said, I got a $5 bill in here. Because I think your time is important. I think, I got one in here. I think your time, and I, I've just been giving those out. You might say, Brother Bobby, you paying people to witness to them. Well, how are you doing? If I'm doing it wrong, you tell me how you're doing it. You don't have to this morning. I mean, it's time to shut this thing down and go home, but you tell me how you're doing it. My daddy was the world's worst about witnessing the wrong way, but he did witness. He'd leave people either, either loving him or hating him, either loving God or hating the one that sent them the message. Do you see how quick it is for us to turn our head when we hear about Jesus and the truth there. But 1 John chapter 4, verse 10 says, Herein is love. John says, I found love. I want you to know, and this is John the disciple, and he says, I have found love. Here is where love abides. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the, piti the propitiation for our sins, the atoning sacrifice for our sins. This is love. And in this world that demands we be perfect and perform flawlessly, please listen to me, that's not God. That's not God who demands that we perform flawlessly. He knows that we're sinners. He knows everything that we're doing. He knows us from, from the time we were born to the end of our days. He knows we need Him through not only 2020, but through 2021, and for the rest of our lives, we need Him. How much do you think He's worth? It's the world that demands we be perfect. It's not God. It is the world that dictates what we wear, and the way that we look, and to have a standard of beauty. That just right weight and everything, just that right thing to wear, the perfect hairstyle. <laughs> I'm not a hair specialist. Their interpretation of right and wrong, their version of morality. Here's what I think. I wish I could put a lid on that statement there and never open it up again. Oh my goodness. It, it doesn't matter what you think. No matter what I think, what's the Word of God had to say? The world demands that you perform perfectly. And the husband says to the wife, if you don't do exactly what I tell you to do, then I'm out of here. Hey, this day and time, he's gone, isn't he? And the wife says to the husband, I'm going to mold you and make you into something that I want you to be. That is not God. That's our perception of God sometimes, but it's not Him. The world demands that you perform and you've got to be the best at something. It is not so with God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God, through His Son Jesus, says that to all the world that will listen, come. I'm telling you now, if He's going to say that to the woman at the well, 
if he's going to say that to Peter after he has denied him, if he's going to stand Peter up on the day of Pentecost and let Peter preach the first message that so many 3,000 believers come to a saving faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says to us, come. But I want to give him something. Well, good, give him your heart. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. No, I'll give a $200 check. May your money perish with you, says the word of God. Well, I'll start right now and I'll give every day till I die. Will not sum up to anything except 30 pieces of silver because he wants your heart. He didn't come for your money. <laughs> he did not. And he didn't stay in glory because he knew you weren't going to believe it. He came down for those who believe and those who don't believe. It's just that the unbelievers will never get the message. I'm going to do the best that I can. That's another one I want to put in the garbage can and just... It's not the best that you can do. It's what God has done. It's the best that God has done. And that is Jesus Christ birthing his son into the world without a human means except for that precious mom Mary. He brought him into the world. In, in the act of closing, he has a present for us today. His name is Jesus. Don't be spiritual and indifferent about Jesus. I'm not telling you to be a street preacher. I'm just saying don't walk through your life being faithless. Don't be spiritually indifferent. He has a present for you today. His name is Jesus. And there's no amount of money because he is the pearl of great price, says the word of God. He's the pearl of great price. And besides all that, he already owns everything. You belong to him right now. Through an act of salvation, or maybe just through an act of birth, you, even through the act of birth, you belong, you belong to him because you're made in his image. He has his stamp upon you. But until you receive him, until you open him up for yourself, don't reject his gift. I wish I could. I wish I could unwrap this Christmas present and give it to you, but I can't. How many Christmases have you spent so far yet knowing what God wanted but wasn't willing to give him that? You see, you have to accept Jesus for yourself. My Sunday school teacher this morning told me that the preacher can't do it for you. Nobody else, mama can't do it for you. You got to open up Jesus for yourself. You have to make that decision. Jesus asked the question, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Well, the decision is being made today. Some may say, well, I won't be back here. Well, that's understandable. Many people reject Christ the first time they've ever heard him, and the second, and the third, and they go their whole life rejecting Christ. But they know about him, and that's the message of the church as they give it out. We tell people about a Christ child. We give gifts in the name of the Christ child. But ultimately, what the Christ child is, he, he wants the heart of every boy, girl, man and woman. He wants them to bend their knees to him because he gives to us eternal life. Would you pray with me, please? Father, might sound kind of strange, but Merry Christmas. I renew my vow to you, Lord Jesus. You're, most, you're my most prized possession. 
stood up and tried to give them away. But it's left up to others, Lord, to look at the tree on which you died and realize that your blood was shed for us. It's left to them, left up to them, Lord. And I ask you to work in the lives of men and women. Father, I got people here this morning that's hurting, hurting big time. I don't even know how to help them. But Lord, you do. Would you be the God of all comfort one more time? And spare us, Lord. Give us another opportunity to come back and offer up a, a prayer of praise, a song of praise. When we come back, Lord, may we decide this is the song I want to sing for Jesus. This is the way I want to live for Jesus. We have so many people telling us different things, Lord God. May we hear the voice of the Good Shepherd. May we obey him. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for coming and being a part of our worship service this morning. And uh, we will have evening services tonight, begin at 6 o'clock. And uh, God bless you, and I wish everyone a, a Merry Christmas. You're dismissed. Get a picture taken there. We need a. We won't. We won't.